Something I wanted to talk about today is about divorce and how divorce impacted my life in addition to my illness. So getting divorced was definitely challenging. Um, I had to move, I had to find a new place to live. I had nothing literally other than like clothes and a vacuum. <laughs> So I needed to, you know, try to figure stuff out. It was very difficult and I felt like a lot of people abandoned me and didn't bother to ask me about my side of things because, well, you know, I left, so I must be the bad guy, right? The reality is caretaker's burnout had a lot to do with why I left and the way I was being treated by my ex-husband was not something that I appreciated and I needed it to stop. And the only way to make it stop was to leave it gave him many opportunities to change, and the change didn't happen. I'm not here to badmouth my ex-husband on the internet or anything like that. I want to talk about the reality of caretaker's burnout. Caretaker's burnout happens when one person is sick and the other person is healthy. And sometimes it can happen with both people being sick. Someone always ends up becoming the caregiver towards the person who is ill. And in turn, sometimes loses themselves, loses their way, loses their life in the sense of not doing anything for themselves anymore, and they just basically care for the person that they're with. Now, you may think, well, that can't go wrong. Nothing could go wrong there. Well, the reality is lots can go wrong there. When you start putting yourself on the back burner, you can become abusive towards your spouse, or your parent, or your in-law, whoever you're taking care of, or your child. The reality is you need to get resources and help yourself. You need to go to therapy. You need to find something that you can do outside of the person that is sick. You need to be taking care of your own mental health. And that's part of the reason that my marriage deteriorated. And that's something that didn't end up getting fixed, so to speak. So I left. I felt alone in a marriage and it was really difficult for me. I was battling and still am battling a whole bunch of diseases that no one around me seems to understand other than myself. And I've tried to explain to people, and they understand to a point, but no one's going to get it 110% unless they actually have it. I do have people in my life that are trying to get it, and I appreciate you, I see you, I understand, and thank you for being there. It means a lot to me. However, this isn't about you right now. <laughs> but I am very grateful for you, nonetheless. The reality with chronic illness and divorce is a statistic that is disheartening. There are those people that fall in love, they stay together through thick and thin, through sickness, through being poor as dirt, and then succeeding together at some point. But that's not always the case. There are people that get impatient with the process, there's people that get impatient with their spouse for being sick, and then resentment forms, and then after resentment sets in, there's more issues to be addressed. So, as someone who became the form of someone else's resentment, I would encourage other people who are caring for their loved ones to seek help. Go and talk to a doctor. Go and talk to a therapist. Join a group, if there's a group, for people that have a sick spouse. Get the support that you need so that you can better support your spouse and yourself. It's like that saying, don your own mask before donning the person next to you, like on the airplane. Basically, you need to be taking care of yourself, regardless of whether you think you need it or not. You do. Every single human being needs to feel important, validated, and loved. And we need to validate and love ourselves to help our loved ones along. I hope that this has helped in a little bit. In a little bit. <laughs> My brain just words and it's like jumble here say and then it's yeah. Anyways, I hope that this has helped. If it has, that's awesome. If not, that's okay. I know I'm not for everybody and <laughs> that's all right, but I would encourage you to do something for yourself if you're a caregiver. It's your homework for today. <laughs> I'm joking. It's not homework. It's just something you want to do or you can do is to Go and find something that you enjoy. If you had a hobby before your partner got sick or you had a hobby before you started dating your partner and you gave it up, 
maybe try to work that back into your schedule. Give yourself an hour out of the week or a night off on the week and do that, that thing. So like for me, it would be like drawing. Give myself an hour or a day where I just draw and have nothing to do with the person that I'm caring for. Not like ignoring them completely. Obviously having someone to come in and help you out with that so that you can get a bit of reprieve, like respite care, which can be quite nice for yourself and also for the person you're caring for. I hope that my words weren't too jumbled. I have a bit of a migraine, so I'm sure I may have seemed a little all over the place. I hope that the clarity is there, and if not, I apologize. I can't really edit out my brain and how it makes me talk, <laughs> so... Thanks again for being here. I hope you take good care and we'll talk again very, very soon. Bye.